What can you say about Pennsylvania that hasn't already been said about a McDonald's ice cream machine? It's cold. It's constantly undergoing maintenance. But when it all comes together, what you get is something comforting in its familiarity and super appealing to old people and broke college students. Pennsylvania, the official state of firehouse wedding receptions. Oh, no. Mmm, DJ Autoplay is turning up the funk. Welcome to our state, scrapple on the plate, construction's gonna make me late. Pennsylvania here will stay, did you bosk off back in May? We have something like 13 million people in this misshapen Lego block of a state. Oh wait, no, Commonwealth. You see, we're a commonwealth, like Massachusetts, Virginia, and Kentucky. And from what we could find, there's no meaningful difference between a state and a commonwealth beyond the name. William Penn founded Pennsylvania so people could be Quakers in peace. And good for him, although he claimed he named it after his father, which is a roundabout way of saying he named it after himself. And we kicked around a bit before officially being admitted to the Union on Wednesday, December 12th, 1787. But if you want my opinion, it's because Delaware butted in line! The Constitution was written in Pennsylvania, so we should have been the first state. But nope, it went to Delaware! What is Delaware? Delaware is a road you go through to get to a better beach. Eh, Delaware, no, like, corporate tax. We have a million credit card companies registered here. Nah, we're Delaware. And the rest is history. Pennsylvania, the only place where people get tired of eavesdropping. Pennsylvania, sponsored by Scrapple. Oh, you never had Scrapple? It's one of our more questionable traditions. It's a collection of unwanted pork trimmings, like the butt and the hawks, all mixed together with cornmeal and buckwheat flour, and other stuff like black pepper or sweetened condensed milk, depending on the recipe. You let it all congeal into a block of premeditated murder before frying it in a pan and then serving it with breakfast. If I gave you Scrapple and I didn't tell you what it was, you would think it would be just spam that I cooked a little bit too long. Scrapple. It's what doesn't make it into sausage. It failed its hot dog audition, but whatever. It's food. So you eat it, and then you put on your reflective vest, fill your thermos, and grab your browning off the rack, or marlin if you're fancy, or SKS if you're one of those dudes. Because it's the first day of hunting season, and school is closed. No thermos? Well, you can stop for coffee along the way. But where you stop is a matter of Pennsylvania pride. Yep, it's that tired-ass Sheets versus Wawa debate. For the uninitiated, Sheets and Wawa are two warring gas station restaurants, if you can call them restaurants, and some people swear by one and curse the other. Of course, it's way over-exaggerated, but some people do take it seriously, except for all the people in the middle who go with wh whatever's closest at the moment, like a drunk guy going for one last beer at the party in State College. Whether it's Sheets or Wawa, the one you prefer ultimately comes down to what you're looking for in the moment. I feel like most people would agree that Wawa has the better coffee, and insofar as gas station food can be healthy, Wawa wins there too. Sure, Sheets makes salads and wraps, but they're not as good as Wawa's salads and wraps. Yet a Sheets burrito is better than almost anything Wawa makes. Sheets also has superior mac and cheese. And if you have no plans on ever seeing the inside of a gym, Sheets will completely wreck your digestive tract with all sorts of fried sorcery, like cheesy bacon tater bombs, fried Oreos, a Nashville hot chicken sandwich served on a waffle with syrup a burger topped with mozzarella sticks, a burger topped with tater tots, and loaded nachos that will see you dead before 35. Whereas Wawa has stuff like soup, salad, deli bowls you can pack with veggies and lunch meats, and a drink menu full of sugar bombs. Roman's probably got a list up as I'm reading this. But I guess Wawa feels like they've fallen behind sheets, because now they're doing this dinner at Wawa promotion where they're making burgers and fries and pasta and take home reheatable meals, and I'm just asking, why? I mean, why not, but also, more importantly, why? I think the sheets versus Wawa debate comes down to one of atmosphere. 
You're less likely to be asked for change or offered a new pair of socks for half price outside of a Sheets. But not because it's more upscale, but rather because, at least in our experience, there are four Wawa's for every one Sheets. But that only works on the east side of the state. As you move west toward Pittsburgh, you will see way more Sheets than Wawa. Sheets generally take up more real estate, so you'll find sheets where the land value is lower because you can't really put a sheets in a city because all sheets are really made to accommodate trucks. And by that, I mean tractor trailers. Whereas Wawa's can sometimes exist without the gas station and you can, see, and you can find standalone Wawa's that are just convenience stores. Even though plenty of sheets have locations for indoor and outdoor seating, it never seems like anybody uses them except for when it's a gathering place for impromptu do car show. There's almost never anywhere to sit outside of a Wawa. And yet people love to gather by the trash cans and recycling bins at Wawa's. So much so, there's even a Facebook group that's just called People Who Eat on Wawa Trash Bins. And they're there and they're smoking and eating and drinking coffee. And they're loitering in a way that no one really cares about. Because police will literally walk past somebody who's been standing in the same place for seven hours by the Wawa trash can. And they just walk right in because they need a medium roast coffee. This is not a review where we settle the debate. Because nobody's loyalty is unbreakable. There is no consistency to what people like around here. It's just not how we do things in PA. That old saying about how Pennsylvania is Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and Alabama in between? Well, that's a load of garbage. We're not nearly consistent enough to maintain that. Most of us are busy planning our morning commute to take construction work into account. Because there will never be a time when there's no construction. No matter what time of the year. The traffic cone is practically the state plan. And the reason it's that way is because we have all four seasons and they're all raging. We have very hot summers and very cold winters. So all the asphalt breaks up because it rains a lot right before winter and then the water freezes. And the freeze, the, fr the water expands and makes cracks in the road. Water gets into the cracks, cracks expand more, then you get potholes. Water gets into the potholes and it freezes because our winters go freeze, thaw, freeze, thaw, freeze, thaw. And then you have big holes everywhere. And then it's summer and everything's gooey. And then you get tar snakes everywhere. Those should be our state reptile, tar snakes. And the state grain is alcohol. Oh yeah. State stores. Look, Pennsylvania's alcohol laws have always been weird for decades. You see, it, could all, it all goes back to Prohibition, when the Pennsylvania governor didn't like alcohol. And even after Prohibition was repealed, he still didn't want it in the state. And I swear, if they tried that thing again today, it'd be like trying to take away people's guns, but more violent. Anyway, because of the attitude about booze, we got the Pennsylvania Liquor Control Board, which decides who gets licenses to sell the stuff, and what price you can sell liquor for, and how long you can serve it every day. We don't have any dry counties, but we do have some practically dry municipalities. And in between all of that exist the state stores, otherwise known as fine wine and good spirits. It's a government store. It's a store that will let you get liquor and wine, but no beer. If you want beer, you have to go to restaurants or beer distributors. A beer distributor is a garage where you buy, where you buy beer by the case. Or if you go to a restaurant, the restaurant may have a bottle shop attached, which is a like a separate room or a sl slightly separate, like, it doesn't even have to have a, I think it has to have a door between it or maybe not. It's like a bunch of coolers off in the corner separated by a wall, and that's where you can take six packs out. But some restaurants can have six packs to go, but you can't grab them yourself. They're behind the counter. And very recently, you can now get beer at grocery stores. But even that's weird because the grocery store has to be considered a restaurant and has to have places to sit down. And you can, you can buy alcohol now. It, some restaurants, excuse me, grocery stores, you can buy beer and wine, but you can't check it out at the checkout counters. You know, at, the, at the front of the store, you have to go to a separate special point of sale machine and get your your beer or wine or wine in a can or box wine or hard seltzer checked out there 
and it has to go inside an opaque shop it. You either have an opaque shopping bag or a paper bag. They have to staple it closed and staple the receipt to the outside of the paper bag. And now we get to talk about liquor licenses. Okay, the Liquor Control Board determines the quota by population. So if you want to have a restaurant and you want to serve alcohol, you have to have a license to do it. But there's only one license available per 3,000 residents in your county, excluding the places that were already grandfathered in before this started. That's why you can find places that are completely run down. There are these dive bars, but for some, they, how, are, how is this place staying open? Well, this is, a, this is a place that has a grandfathered liquor license that is never going to go away, I think, or maybe they have to keep renewing it. Anyway, they've been here forever, they never will close, and they're just hanging on to it because they have that glorious liquor license. This is why opening a restaurant in Pennsylvania is a pain in the ass, and why you see so many liquor licenses posted right on the window of a business like Temp Tags on a Honda Civic. But at least we come correct with the junk food. For potato chips, you either have Middlesworth out of Beavertown, or Middlesburg, or you have Utz potato chips out of Hanover. I'm an Utz guy. But also in Hanover, and not to be confused with Utz, is Snyder's of Hanover, which handles pretzels. Then for dairy and juices, you have Clover Farms, which moved uh, to Reading from the Pennsylvania Dutt side of the Commonwealth. Or you could go with Gears Dairy out of Pottsville and all the kidney stones you can handle if you're drinking their iced tea. There's Tasty Cake out of Philly, which makes a collection of processed baked goods that occupies a good 70% of the snack section in every cafeteria in the Commonwealth. Because you don't just get coffee cake, you get coffee cake with the creamy center. Of course, this goes terribly with coffee. You want to be... You want to be having the cupcakes? Yeah, the chocolate cupcakes. Hear me out. Chocolate cupcakes with the icing on top. But the icing is probably... It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dark chocolate cupcake with vanilla icing on the top, but the vanilla icing has a stripe of chocolate going down the middle. And then inside you have the creamy filling, and you bite it in half, and you stick your finger in there, because that's how you do it in <laughs> fifth grade. And then you... Mm, in your mouth. Hands washed? No. Or, or, or you take the Tasty Cake cupcakes and then, and then you put them in the fridge for a while and they get a little, they, they get extra hard and, 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 and that's a whole different taste sensation. Or you can put them in the microwave, microwave for a little bit and then they become like a lava cake. I know they're processed and I don't care. Either way, you're getting the sugar rush. And the same with the little donuts. Oh my God, the, 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 little, the little powder sugar donuts. Oh. Oh, I gotta go to the gym after this. And now I'm thinking of Tasty Cake Mini Donuts. Now those are the bomb with coffee. You can either bite them in half. Usually you can't take more than like three bites because then you, and your powder goes everywhere. But those things have a shelf life of like a year. They're freaking great. Oh, you want to go into a, like a diabetic coma. You have that and like Gears chocolate milk and the mini and the mini chocolate donuts. Man, you'll be doing double, you'll be doing double jumps all over the playground and you don't even have to put any cheat codes. And then there's uh, a staple of every high school basketball game, the Miller's Hot Bologna. You also see them in those rundown bars I was talking about. It's a coal region specialty made out of pork cheeks, beef hearts, and mechanically separated chicken bound into long strips and pickled in a brine like Satan's urine sample. Here's a pronunciation guide for outsiders. Skew, skew. It's pronounced skuckle. Bala sinwired? Bala kinwood. Bala kinwood. Bala kinwood. Reading? Nope. Redding. 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 And Centralia is an abandoned town. It's an abandoned town that always was on fire due to a mine fire that never got put out. The abandoned struts of Route 61 got covered in graffiti a whole lot until every inch was just covered in paint and that made it popular with tourists and kids with no curfew. But now, in 2021, it's been paved over. Nah, it hasn't been paved over. They just plowed over the whole thing. Just dirt over all of it. Supposedly the fire's out. That's what I heard. I don't know. Anyway, nobody really has a reason to go to Centralia anymore. I guess you, it's a stopping off point if you're going four-wheeling. Um, or I guess you're going to hang out there because you're too young to have your own apartment, but too old to sneak your partner into their bedroom after curfew. Whatever. 
Keep going north, and then you end up in the Poconos. It's just another bit of the uh, Appalachian Mountains. I say Appalachian. I know the correct pronunciation is Appalachian. I know that thing that starts your car is called a battery, but I say it battery. And a little, uh, b a little body of water that runs through the woods, to me, that's a crick. The Archibald Pothole is the world's biggest pothole which tracks with Pennsylvania drivers. The Pagoda in Reading was in the last airbender. It used to be a hotel, but now it's just a visitor's center that's never open. Muhammad Ali trained here for his comeback fight. His camp is being restored. I think uh, John Madden's son bought it. And it's open on Saturdays, and you can just, like, go there and walk around and check it out. Knobles, or some people say Nobles, but it is Knobles, is an amusement park in Elysburg, Pennsylvania, where it's just free to get in. You're free to park, free to get in. Uh, and the rides are just sort of fair rides. You just buy tickets and just sort of pay as you go. You also have the Renaissance Fair, which costs money. And depending on who you take with you, both will be as hit or miss as an elementary school pizza. You have Hershey Park, which is a more traditional amusement park. That costs money. You got Crystal Cave. Oh, and which also cause mo costs money. Just, just save yourself the hassle and go to Knobles. All the money you'll save on parking and admission can be put towards a, a brick of vanilla ice cream served between two hot waffles. Do that after you ride the Phoenix. It's number two, but then occasionally it's number one. Like the best roller coaster, not just the best wooden roller coaster, the best roller coaster. I swear, you... Just go there and fucking ride that thing. You feel like you're going to die. It's amazing. It's like 1950s safety standards. It's a lot of fun. It doesn't go very fast. I think it only goes like 55 miles an hour. But whoo! We give Pennsylvania hell because it's our freedom as Pennsylvanians. In between the dreary, potholed, over-salted winter roads are the springtime stretches of wheat fields and road apples left by constipated horses pulling a buggy along Keller's Mill Bridge. The farmers' markets are a place of warmth and welcome. The hiking trails, including the Appalachian Trail, are alive with the sounds of birds in the daytime and rhythmic circadian discord in the evening. You can go to Hershey Park and enjoy yourself without even going into the park because the Chocolate World ride is just outside of the park and you can ride that ride all day for free and get, you know, like a free chocolate bar at the end of it as often as you want. Go in the parking lot and get high and then go in and experience the Wonka Tunnel of Terror of singing cows and dancing chocolate. If you're more of a city goer, yeah, there's Philadelphia and the Rocky Steps, and you got Harrisburg, and that's the state capital, and something, something. And Pittsburgh, yeah, and hipsters, and all that. But if you're more into the scenic route, we have Carbon County and Tioga County. And if you like both, if you want everything, city and country, all in one place, you can go to Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Like stuffing your face to excess? I don't, but there's Shady Maple Smorgasbord, which will give you a discount if you've had gastric bypass surgery. Is that real, Nick? They really give you a discount if you got a stomach staple? I mean, I'll believe it either way. We have fields upon fields and farms upon fields, and waterfalls underneath hiking trails and mountain ranges. We call them mountains, they are. And my gym has a bar in it. We have quarries and state parks, and actual seasons like winter. And we have burrowed rodents who will let you know how much longer it's gonna last. It's more American than any other place in America. Because even though we're home to any number of historical landmarks, we generally don't harp on them and how much we embody these states united. We're the most Southern of the Northern states. I don't know if we really have an identity because we're too busy being Pennsylvanian and being characterized by our own stately self-interest. This is Pennsylvania. It's perfect because it sucks, but not all the time. I mean, not any more or less than most places unless you have wanderlust. And if you do have wanderlust, PHL, Philadelphia International Airport, will get you out of the Commonwealth with the quickness. I don't know why people complain about Philly Airport so much. We're not JFK, we're not Newark, we're not LaGuardia. You can really kill time there, too. It takes almost 30 minutes to walk from Terminal A East all the way to Terminal F. So even if you get delayed, just get your steps in. But at the end of the day, the state is ours. The Commonwealth, it's ours. It's awesome because it's home. Even on the days we wish home was anywhere else. But that's natural, isn't it?
to have this weird ambivalence about the place you come from, the place you grew up. And yet there's something about such a place that will always be special, whether you stay or you go. Pennsylvania is the save point of the RPG known as the American experience. And no matter your progress, you can always go back, fully leveled and more appreciative of the simplicity of a place called home. Pennsylvania Here we'll stay Did you Did you Back in 